All right, and good evening, everyone. Once again, this is Detroit uh, Story DSQ Live, and um, we're, I think, episode number three. <laughs> no, maybe more than that, but I am stop counting. <laughs> I know. But, uh, we're uh, glad to have um, happy to have Abel Ramirez uh, here with us, uh, one of our one of our contributing authors, and wrote a, a great story called "The, the One" in uh, issue number three. And so um, he's joining us to talk. Uh, we're talking about that about that story and what prompted about that, and then we'll just go on from there. But um, but with us, we're starting that. Um, but for anybody that uh, is unfamiliar with Detroit Stories Quarterly, because we've been here about a year, um, we've got our four, uh, four issues out. And that we have the summer, the uh, summer one coming out in a week or so, or in mm -hmm. about a week or so, yeah. and um, and then we come out every every season, and um, <laughs> somewhere thereabouts, as long as spring, summer, fall, or winter, we're in there. Somewhere. There you go. And um, okay. and uh, looking, just keep moving forward, and just uh, have uh, stories, mostly fiction stories, uh, some alternate fiction, sci-fi, horror, whatever strikes us about, or all the, all the stories, just having Detroit uh, theme. And uh, that's pretty much the boundaries. So with that, Abel, once again, thanks so much for joining us. And um, yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And just was just to open it up, we just um, just just to start with the just story of the one. What uh, what gave you the idea uh, for that story? What's what's behind that story? Well, uh, there's a scene in the uh, story where the characters go underneath the viaduct by, uh, by the train station. Yeah. They come out on the other side. And everything's a little different. Uh, I did that once. The, the lighting was a little different. I didn't know if it was just the light messing with my eyes or anything like that, but uh, I just kind of had the idea of what if this was another dimension and it just kind of went from there. So I just made up the rest pretty much. Well, that's, that's the best tradition. <laughs> and before yeah. I realize, actually, the first question, the most obvious question is just tell us what do you think, what is, this, what is the story about? Actually, a lot of people watching may not have read the story yet. So, what, what is the story about? It's uh, about a uh, group of uh, college students that go to play a game of uh, softball in a, a playground and uh, when they go under the viaduct to, to go to the playground, mm -hmm. things are a little bit different. It's a little weird and then uh, they come across an interesting thing. <laughs> uh, one of the main characters uh, is an old house. It's, a, it's a, um, across the street from the playground and just some weird things happen. Just a, a sci-fi kind of maybe a little bit of tinge of horror right. to it, but uh, just uh, just just for fun, I guess. If you like that kind of stuff, yeah. Well, obviously we do. So, <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> no, it was for sure. Go, go ahead, Doc. Well, I, I was gonna uh, say I, I don't know, uh, Abel, if you uh, if you've listened to, to our other um, uh, uh, pieces on you know reviewing our stories and a lot one of the points that i made uh in, in talking about your story uh when i was when i was reading your story like cold you know after you had sent it you know we were mm -hmm. processing and getting ready to get it in you know and I, and I sat down and i gave it a full reading man that thing scared the heck out of me i'm like i said <laughs> I, and and i and i actually i had like an ethical moment i'm like you know What's happening here is is so scary. I wonder if it, it would it be would it have an, an, an impact, a negative impact on some of our readers if they're younger and all of that. But then what I realized, Abel, is um, and and something I don't if you if you look closely at that edition, we actually have themes of of young people going through traumatic things. Keith's piece yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, addresses that with his character. Um, so so it, it really turned out great. But I just have to tell you. Um, and, and I'm not scared easy with stuff, you know, long, I mean, after the ex exodus back in the day, I was, I was good after that. I mean, nothing else scared me after that, that things had to reach you, but, but yours really uh, uh, reached that point. I would just ask, I mean, is that, uh, is that a, a, an interest that you have in, in horror itself or, or just as a, you know, kind of an aside, a thing that you like uh, reading or viewing? Yeah, I've always been a Stephen King fan. As a kid, I started reading Stephen King, his short stories, and I think it was in his book, Night Shift. Night Shift, oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a big yeah. fight, love Night Shift. Yeah, Yeah, that's what started me on the on the horror kick, and then I grew up watching all kinds of stuff, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, all types of fiction, but I kind of always leaned toward horror uh, a little more than the others, mm -hmm. so. Have you written any horror, have you written any stories before? Is this your... 
are we lucky enough to have your first story or is this uh i've got a bunch of stories i've written some of them are on my website um i'm always oh. working on new stories and i'm working on a novel right now oh man what's the what's the novel about if i can mm -hmm. ask it's a, a missing person supernatural missing person story so oh. it's a it's not really horror. There might be a little tinge to it, but it's it would be more of a thriller, a supernatural thriller. Right. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, wait oh, a minute. Keith. No, I'm good. Go ahead. Well, um, I I want to I want to uh, harken back to the to the location. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Abel, you know the 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 fact that you know you set your story in Southwest Detroit uh, was was particularly appealing to us because you know our goal is always to try to represent you know, all the aspects of Detroit. Um, uh, back in my, my days, um, before journalism, I was, you know, EMT with Detroit Fire EMS. And I worked at Medic 9 sometimes, which is located in Southwest Detroit. And I always, I loved going, working in that area whenever I got the opportunity, because it really was like going, it was a different world for me. You know, I grew mm -hmm. up in the West Side, Northwest Detroit. Southwest Detroit, the mixture of the cultures, you know, on a Friday night, man, anything was possible in Southwest exactly. Detroit. In Delray area, anything. Oh, yeah, Delray. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so I, I would, uh, I guess I want to segue to ask, are you, uh, are you, are you focusing a lot of your, your subject matter um, within that kind of locale, within the Southwest Detroit area, um, in that community? Um, some of the stories are located there, but um, depending on what just goes on in my head, it could be anywhere. Uh, a lot of the short stories take place in a fictional town uh, in Michigan called Ravensgate. Oh, okay. But it's the, the novel that I'm writing is set in Ravensgate. So I have a lot of short stories that are also in that fictional town, but it's still based in Michigan. Great. Great. Yeah, I grew up in Southwest Detroit. Detroit, like you said, the culture, uh, there's so many, like I, when I went to high school, there, everybody was there. We had blacks, Latinos, whites, Asians, Arabs. We all got along. Yeah. So it was really cool to grow up with a bunch of different kinds of friends. So it was cool. Yeah. I was wondering too, in terms of when you go, when you uh, go back in terms of the story itself, I was intrigued, I mean, because it sounds so much like, definitely, I'm just like, just as a, a creative writer, when we talk about how you got the idea, and that you go back to that bridge and you know going under a bridge and then just kind of took off from there you know and i was wondering, i was wondering if you could if it is sometimes it's hard to describe that i know because the same thing you know i know i was telling doc when i write sometimes people have asked me i said i sometimes feel like i'm transcribing you know i mean like i write and it's just yeah. like it's just like I, it just comes and i don't know where the characters come from they yeah. just kind of introduce themselves and say you know hi i'm bob and i'm in the story you know so it's like <laughs> you know and that's pretty much it but um uh, how how does that does that you know how does it how does it work for you there? Uh, kind yeah, of in, the, in the, yeah. What's that? In this story, I should say particularly. Yeah. Yeah, in this story, I just had the idea of a different dimension because when I did go under the bridge, like I said, the lighting was different. I think it was the the sunlight affected my eyes right, and it right. felt just felt weird. And I and I thought to myself, what if this was just a totally different dimension? What would be in this place? And then. I just decided to say, okay, it's going to be creepy, it's going to be scary, and then um, little by little, I just created the characters, and like you said, the, the, kind of, it's kind of like uh, transcribing, they do their own thing yeah. sometimes, Yeah, I, I'm surprised at what they do, the conversation, the dialogue, just kind of, they right. say their own thing, um, but then it turns out to be okay, and you know, so. Right. Where did the uh, children yeah. come from, man, the, the, those, those, those kids? I mean, it was like children of the corn. That scared the living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. That's that what was it. I said. Oh my lord! Okay. I was good. I was good until the kids. I'm like those kids. <laughs> when the mother kept coming onto the porch, sweeping yeah, the porch, you know, I was like, yeah. I was like yeah. where, where did they? Where did they? Where did that come yeah. from, man? Well, the kids, I don't know exactly. They just, they just popped up because actually, my old house. I used to live on that side. Yeah. On the other side of the bridge. So that old house was my old house. And I thought, you know, what if um, it was my old neighborhood, but it wasn't really my old neighborhood. It was a, a fake or it was a, um, um, a, a bad copy of it in this dimension, right, uh, right. you know, and uh, the kids just came out. The kids just kind of <laughs> came out from the, the house and um, 
something was in the back there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, they just, they, since the, to me, the world was um, distorted. Yeah. So too, yeah. then the, the people there or the kids there had to be distorted. Right. right. Yeah. So, so I, I noticed, Abel, like, um, and, and I should mention this up front, I, I noticed your bias toward U of M. Uh, <laughs> in, in there, I, it was, it's, it's not subtle at all. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I also noticed that that uh, you were you were you were very intentional on uh, showing like your characters. They were they were almost like a little bit of a family, you know. And it was yeah. clear, you know they were good friends, um, uh, and and they had been together for a while. Uh, but but there is also and, and Keith and I we've talked about this in some of our previous discussions, um, and and you wouldn't have known this, but but the theme of portals and dimensions. Mm -hmm. has become uh, kind of a gradual Detroit Stories quarterly thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I think some of it, and, and Keith, you can certainly jump in here, mm -hmm. but I think some of it is because we, we, are, we like to have some escape hatches so that we can create new realities, mm -hmm. you know, but still yeah. stay within the conscripts of a story. Um, uh, and I would just ask you, Abel, you know, when you created this, this uh, this dimension. Were there any deeper underlying things like like uh, is there a sense that you know there is kind of a dark side um, that we have to deal with um, in Detroit and that maybe that explains a lot of you know the more negative issues that there is kind of a uh, kind of an uncontrolled portal sometimes that exists where 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 things uh, just aren't good. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but what are your thoughts about that? Well, kind of. I mean, um, where I grew up, I mean, it, it was really cool. Like I said, there's there's tons of people there, yeah. uh, different cultures, but, you know, then there's the bad side to it. Yeah. Um, things just happened. There's uh, the gang. Things used to be really bad back in the day. Not so much right now, I don't think, but um, there was always a negative side. I, I used to uh, do security down in that area, and I used to see a lot of stuff yeah. um so a lot of it was negative but there's also the positive there's right. a lot of good people from the area but as the story goes it was it's just a, a creepy short story and uh, it kind of like kind of an inspiring thing for me was the tv show um tales from the dark side oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. In, oh, yeah. like in the beginning you know you see the 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 trees and all of a sudden the light changes and it becomes this other dimension, this kind of creepy dimension. That's kind of how it is. It's like our dimension, but just a creepy version, a dark yeah. side version of it. I want to ask you too, in terms of like one thing, we go back and forth because of all this, you know, all the stuff that's going on now in, in the country, stuff's kind of up, upheaval. And I think in, in terms of our, in, in terms of stories, you got to go back and forth in terms of what you feel like obligating. Should you write about this? Should you write about that? And, you know, what do you what do you see as the importance of, of you know, or, or importance of just stories? You know, in time you're telling stories in times like yeah. this. I mean, um, I just leave it open ended like that. I mean, how, how do you um, how do you think stories help, or or why are they good to tell in these times? Uh, it's kind of uh, at least the fiction stories that I like. It's good to just get away for a minute. Right. Just go to another place. Just go to a, another person's um, life. In a sense, what's going on? It's just it's just a getaway. It's just like watching a, a movie or a TV show. But um, with stories, you can always learn little lessons and things like that too. So it's mainly just a, a just for fun, just to get away, and that's the importance of it, you know. Um, and keep stories coming. That's yeah. 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 Keep them coming because uh, there's always another generation that's gonna wanna get away. Right, you know? right, right. Good. Good. You know, as as we're talking, gentlemen, I'm I'm thinking about, um, and I'm not quite sure where I heard it, but, um, you know, and and Keith, I, I think I may have mentioned to you about this indirectly. I know when when I was working on on your story, Abel, you know, reviewing it and uh, and and. Uh, you know, constructing, you know, some feedback here or there. One of the things that, that, that I struggled with and then I recognized is that, you know, there's a certain level of spiritual 
uh, element, um, uh, I think, in, in all of our stories to some extent. And, um, you know, uh, I mean, it's no secret. I'm, you know, I uh, come from the Christian perspective and I'm, you know, active in my church and all of that. But, but I've, I have really come to realize that uh, in order for real truth and storytelling to, to emerge, we really need to see, you know, sometimes the darker side so that we can find the light, you know. And uh, uh, what, I think what's interesting with your story, Abel, is that you do, there's, there's a redemptive piece in the end, even though there's loss, you know, and we're, try, we're really trying not to give it away. We want people to, yeah. to read, it. but there's loss, but there's also kind of a redemption to it in the end in that, um, you know, the kids, they, they, they go back into the light. They're able to get back into to where they came from. Um, and, and you can't help but wonder, well, um, uh, will their life, you know, be better as a result or uh, uh, in honoring the loss that they experienced and all of that. So yeah. and I guess you probably imagine it. How the heck are they getting all of this out of this story? I was just, you know, putting <laughs> yeah. it but it, it's, it's, Yeah. It kind of just uh, it ha it happens, kind of like you, you were saying, Keith, yeah. that they just kind of write themselves. How are you going to get out of this? You right, know, right. Um, well, they had a car. Who can do something with the car? Let's get out of here. <laughs> you know? There you um, go. So that's kind of pretty much how it went uh, with that. But um, I actually am going to um, rewrite the one, not that story, but I'm going to use the character of the, the one okay. in, another, in another story or, or novel later on. So it, it, it's going to come back a little later. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. Good. One of the thing. Oh, wait. go ahead, Keith. I was gonna say. I mean, um, we're, we're hoping. Are you gonna be able to do some more, some more stories for us? You think in the future? You got any ideas? And it might be yeah, I've already got some uh, on the back burner. Some are already complete. That it might work for you guys. I don't know if you, you know, you can check them out. Uh, and I'm, yeah. I've got a few that I'm working on now. Okay, great. great. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Um, well, well, I was just, um, I guess, in line with what you you were asking about too. Uh, Keith and Abel's approach to to writing and all of that. Abel, I, I know you know you're a very creative individual. We were discussing that prior to um, you know getting started. You know, I've mentioned like how you're also you you have artistic skills. You know, obviously you have great people skills too. So as a creative person, what what how would you describe like your your approach to in this case the writing process? You know, um, uh, and, and obviously, okay, so you, you've got your idea and all of that, but um, are you, are you uh, depending on maybe some cup of coffee or something to keep you going? Do you oh. sit down and just nail yourself to the seat and write, or are you using your phone? What, what's your approach to writing? How do you get, how do you get your, the writing written? Is well, for me, I'll have an idea, and mm -hmm. I might jot it down, and, and uh other ideas will come around that idea, concepts, okay. and I'll jot them down and I'll kind of just let it uh, simmer for a little bit and then it'll just grow. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, I, I have to have a coffee. I'll, I have to write out in, in a Panera Bread or a Starbucks or a place. Oh. I can't do it at home. I'll get distracted. Oh, wow. um, I have, I know there's a lot of people out, out in public, but they don't bother me. It's like they're part of the, the atmosphere. So I, I go out to a place, have a coffee and just go at it and look at the notes and see what happens. And, you know, it might change. Uh, I might uh, write something that um, I thought was good at first. And then uh, I ditch it for something better that just pops in my head at the time of the writing. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I do. That's kind of how I do it. I take notes, um, just ideas, concepts, and then work with that out in a Starbucks or something like that. Do you do any yeah. collaboration, like get feedback or anything from, from anybody? Like, I know uh, a lot of times I've drawn upon my wife uh, to do like a first or, or second look when I'm working on something before, before I will send it to our, our copy editor. Um, uh, what, is there somebody who you utilize for that or, or do you serve as your own kind of editor in a lot of ways i'm pretty much my own editor and okay. um if i let it sit if i'm working on a story and i let it sit for a little while if i come back to it then you got you know yeah. fresh eyes that's right and then uh 
that's when some edits might take place. It's like a, it's like a looking at somebody else's work almost, right? In a way, yeah. and then you just make the tweaks and adjustments there. And eventually, I get to a point where you can't get any better. You know, you can always continue to change it. You can always add. You can always take away. You can always change. But then I say to myself, okay, I got to get done with this. Uh, eventually, I got to stop it. And then it's the best it could be. And I just leave it at that and see what happens with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, Keith, go ahead. You were, you were going to say something? Well, no, I was. I, I think I was thinking in terms of going back in terms of the relationship between the friends, you know, mm -hmm. there, I think, um, in the, um, as they, because I thought it was interesting, there was the, there was the group that came to the park, you know, first, and then there was that other, you know, group who couldn't wonder, you know, wonder why, why weren't you in the same yeah. park, and they're talking back and forth, you know, and I mean, what, what, you know, how, what, were they, um, were they all close friends? You said they were, they were all, they were all went to, they were college schoolmates or friends or just kind of casual. What's the, like, what's the relationship between them or what in your mind what was the, between them? Uh, they're, they're old friends. And actually oh. a few of them were based on real people that I know. Oh, wow. Okay. So when I'm writing, I can sort of um, gauge their personality. How would so-and-so say this? Or how would so-and-so react to this? So the characters are sort of based on real people. Yeah. and people that I've known since I was a kid. Oh. So um, the relation goes far back. And as the characters in the story, they just, they don't get to see each other every now and then, you know, for, for a while. So they, they get together every now and then and try to, you know, just hang out. But um, so they're like based, some of them are based on uh, real people that I know. Okay. My own, own friends. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right, good. So I found it interesting too, Abel, that, um, uh, baseball was a was a kind of a, a key theme uh, in this, and you know, as as I've thought further about your story, um, uh, really baseball fit so aptly the scene that you create, you know, on the playground and everything that happens that follows, and and um, and I don't know, you know, as we're talking about stories and, and everything, it's interesting, you know, uh, maybe we do it subconsciously as writers. But you know, I think you really nailed the that particular piece in your story as as being an important prop to move things along. Because I don't know that if they were playing basketball or football, if it could have worked as well as you know uh, the way you had them. You know, they come onto the playground, they're setting up, you know, and they're perfectly positioned to see this house that wasn't there before and everything else that 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 begins to happen. So. Um, uh, and, and I'm assuming baseball, you are a baseball fan? Would that be? Uh, not so much these days, but I used to play as a kid. So ah. when we, we used to set up the bases with, with, with what we could find, a brick, we'd have an extra yeah. glove, that would be Just a base. Like characters. Yep. Yeah, we would um, use what we had. And yeah. um, the way it's set up, the, the playground in the house is actually how it was set up how my house, we lived across the street from the playground. From that playground, okay. It was, so yeah, we used to go play there. So um, the way I set it up was based on experience. Well, that's so, that's so much of, I mean, I like said, kind of follow what Doc was saying, that, that's so much of, of, an, of, a, of an American thing, you know, I mean, in terms yeah. of story, in so yeah. many stories, you know, yeah. in so many movies, <laughs> it's a touch yeah. of, I mean, baseball yeah. is always the touchstone in terms of, whether it's the way that, you know, the, the good old days, the way things used to be, or yeah. what, you know, what represents the neighborhood, you know, the, the neighborhood, like I said, the, the, the scrappy part of the neighborhood, or you get Robert Bedford's thing of the natural, or you get, you know, but I mean, all, so, all some of the best movies, they're all, the, you know, there's, some, there's something about baseball, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that really worked, but I think also when you put baseball, man, we have a story coming out in our next edition that's also to touch on baseball and, and the right. Yeah, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm Tigers, you know what I mean? But, this, but there's was something about when you can put, you know, cross baseball with, or softball, you know, with, with horror, that I think is also just like, just like yeah. clowns, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that, when you, you know, like what Stephen King, you know, loves to do with it, you know I mean? That, yeah. you know, but um, that, that really has, I think, kind of an effect because you have this, you know, warm, fuzzy feeling and then that you kind of just like getting the, you know, getting the rug pulled out from under you when all of a sudden, you know, that game yeah. that is attacked. You know. Yeah, that's kind of what was the uh, the idea. Because when you go, you play baseball with your friends, like I did when I was a kid. It's a bonding thing right. with your, right. your friends. It's fun. Who cares if you win or lose? You try to win, but if you lose, oh well. Um, 
And that's what it was about. It was about a, a group of college kids that were just wanted to get together because they haven't seen each other in a while and just have some fun. Mm -hmm. But then what happened is the exact opposite. Right. Of what they wanted to do. So that was uh, <laughs> the, the, the point of trying to, trying to write a horror story. So. Right. Yep. Yep. You know, <laughs> well. Well, you know, the doctor, is anything else you wanted, wanted to ask? Or no, I, I think I think we've covered everything I, I wanted uh, to ask about. Uh, uh, I, you know, just mentioning and, and Abel, you already know this, and and uh, and and, and uh, I need to get this to you, Keith. Uh, okay. uh, people has uh, put together something for our uh, October or our, our fall edition. Okay. So, um, uh, and and it's and without giving too much away, and I haven't I haven't looked at it yet, Abel, intentionally because I didn't want to be too biased and, and talking. Uh, okay. Uh, but but uh, uh, clearly it is yet more of a bit of a horror theme in there. Oh, great, great. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. great. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Okay, good. good. Yeah, it's. Uh, um, I sent one earlier, a different one, but because of this is the fall edition, it's a little bit more closely related to Halloween. This particular yep. story. Oh, so man. I figured, right. I don't know, if, if you guys like it, you know, well, I'm, I'm uh, sure it'd be real. pretty cool. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, once again, Abel, thanks so much for joining us, man. Thanks for, for that story and for the, for the one that's coming as well. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, putting it in the, um, the book. Uh, a lot of my friends bought the book. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, they, they liked it, so. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's so you might have some more uh, readers in the future, too. Oh, well, that's, that's good to hear. Good Always good. Yes. Thanks so much, man. All right, yeah, everybody. Thank good you guys. Day. Absolutely. All, All right. right. Keith, Bye. we'll be in touch. Yeah, we will. Take care. All right. All right. All right. Take care. All right. We'll see you.